this week on the RV Podcast. How not to run out of your meds on an RV trip. Troubleshooting tips to make RV life easier on the road. Another state park is considering giving back the state park to the Native American tribe they stole it from in the first place. All this, plus the RV News of the Weeks and your questions coming up in Episode 486 of the RV Podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Wendland, and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride, Jennifer. Nice Hello, to be Mr. Michael. with you here in the sunshine state of Florida. What a beautiful day we've had today. Oh, my gosh, it's nice to have temperatures in the 70s again, isn't it? It is nice. There's a little bit of a breeze coming off the Gulf, but uh, beautiful. Hey, you can watch the video version of the RV podcast uh, on our YouTube channel, the RV Lifestyle YouTube channel. Uh, also, if you prefer an audio podcast, you know that you can hear us through your favorite podcast app, and you can listen right now through uh, the player that we have embedded at uh, rvlifestyle.com underneath the podcast tab. Well, we're back in Florida for a little bit, and we'll be doing some testing of a few Class Bs. Yes, you uh, heard that right. Class Bs for the next couple of weeks. Now, um, this is a big project. We're doing this actually with our friend Nick Schmidt from Sunshine State RVs. He's like one of the largest Class B dealers in the country. And we ran into Nick, um, and we've known Nick for years. Uh, we ran into Nick at the Tampa RV Show, and we mm -hmm. got talking about Class Bs. And if you our regulars, you know that um, Class Bs are our roots. That's really what we started in on with Class Bs. And since then, we went to Class B Pluses, then we went to Cs, and now to a fifth wheel. And let me just make it really clear, we love our fifth wheel, and that is going to be a long part of our life. Right now, it's up on our property in Tennessee, and we just might drive one of the Class Bs that we're going to be camp testing up there next weekend see uh, put some put it to the the paces up there camping in the woods but we are going to test out a whole series of class b's for one thing the whole van life movement which was just starting when we kind of moved out of bees five six years ago the whole van life movement has exploded and uh, we really need to get a little more familiar with what uh, what vans today, what Class B vans today are like. So we're going to test a variety of them from different manufacturers and uh, come, come up with a favorite. And, and I guess we should also say that we kind of miss having one part of the Class B. Uh, well, the nice thing about a Class B is that it's easier to park. Uh, obviously, you don't take up as much space. It's easier to get that parking spot. And it's easier to talk my man to pull over because sometimes he won't pull over. He's like, there's no room or he you know, just doesn't want to. And, of course, being right next, you know, you can get up, you can walk up and down a little bit, you can lay down and uh, fix lunch, food. One of the reasons that we have missed a Class B is the going to and from. Not necessarily the camping. We really do love the extra room when we're camping in our fifth wheel. And uh -huh. It's like our condo on wheels. But mm -hmm. uh, our Montana is just like our dream RV. Mm -hmm. But, uh, for example, we just drove from Michigan to Nashville and from Nashville down here to the Gulf Coast where we'll be, this will be our base of operations for the next six weeks or so. And um, we missed having a Class B. You know my favorite part of a Class B? Pulling into a rest area and taking a nap. <laughs> we are not your typical van lifer, are we? <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa go to Class B's van life. But that is a big plus. It's really nice to have it. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of quick trips where a Class B would be just so much handier, more handy. Is that the right word? Uh, than, than a big, um, you know, fifth wheel. So... Uh, I'm not saying we're getting one, but we're going to test them out and be at least familiar with them. And then I think we have to do the same thing with Class A's, because that's the other type that we are not familiar with. We've never been, um, never driven a Class A. We've never camped in a Class A. So I think we're going to try and review several of those later. So that's going to be kind of our ongoing project here for a, a couple of months. But we, we do 
like our class uh, B and we like our fifth wheels. And I think we like every RV. We've been in. <laughs> I think so too. I think you're worse than I am. You always accuse me of liking everything. <coughs> you know how people are always telling us that they live through us? Yeah. Well, this is going to be a good opportunity to live through us as we have what <laughs> probably all of you have dreamed of. Wouldn't it be great if I could try this, 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 that and really get to camp in it? So uh, I welcome you to live through us. Now, we are, I know I'm going to get people saying, hey, test out this one. Well, <laughs> um, there are so many on the market. We are going to pick five or six that we think are kind of representative of all of them. Nick Schmidt, who I get is the largest Class B, I think he's the third largest Class B dealer in the country, the largest in Florida. Uh, he's helping us with this. And uh, so we're not going to get to everybody's favorite. And um, we, we're not going to, you know, we'll, we'll show you the ones that we're testing each week, but we'll put a whole thing together at the end and release a bunch of different videos. But um, five or six should give us a pretty pretty good feel of it. This could be a lifelong project. Yeah, we could probably... We wanted to check them all out. <laughs> no, it's going to be a lot of work. It's a lot of work shooting a review. And it, it is. And the way we do it is these are going to be camping reviews. We're not going to just go look at it in a showroom and do a quick tour through. We're going to actually live and camp in it. So anyway, this is going to be a fun project. And uh, in fact, uh, I've got to finish up recording this because the first one is going to be delivered to us in about an hour. <laughs> so we're going to so have to gotta get Got to get this together. So are you excited for our summer gathering? I am, and I can't believe how quickly that summer gathering sold out. It's happening June 11th to 14th. But of course, uh, it's sold out, but you can always get on the waiting list because, you know, things happen and and openings do happen as well. Now, all of the information is uh, on uh, our new uh, online forum. It's community.rvlifestyle.com. You should be a member of that. Uh, we sold this thing out in one day. And uh, this one is called the Gather and Groove. And uh, like Jen said, it's June 11th through the 14th. It's in Shipshawana. Indiana, and it's going to be, uh, that's a little Amish town. It's just a fun shop. There's good shopping. There's good food. It's near Elkhart, so there's lots of stuff you can learn about RVs, the RV Hall of Fame. 80% uh, of all the RVs on the road today are made in the Elkhart area. Uh, but the big highlight of this, and we, the reason called the Gather and Groove, because uh, on one of those nights, we are going to go attend a uh, an Amish dinner ahead of time, and then uh, a concert by The Temptations. Me and uh, my girl <laughs> will be doing that. So we're pretty excited. Let's hope all that comfort food doesn't put us to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it could do that. Uh, but anyway, that thing sold out in 24 hours. I didn't think it was quite that. And we did that all on community.rvlifestyle.com. Now, we used to do, you know, we still have our Facebook group. We won't get rid of that. For those of you who prefer Facebook, we have 320,000 members. But here's what was interesting. When we sell, when we announce them on our group of 300,000 plus members, it takes three or four days to sell them out. That's just pretty quick. It took 24 hours on this new community, which has a fraction of that, maybe 10,000 members on our new community. So what does that tell you? It tells you what I've been telling you for a long time. One of my pet peeves about Facebook is that when somebody posts something on Facebook, it only shows to a very small percentage of the members of that group. And then it pretty much disappears. It's really hard to see. So anyway, um, come over to our community if you haven't. There is a new development coming on the market for RVers in Tennessee. It's built by the same company we bought our land from. We just went to look at it and it is amazing. Mountaintop property, great views, big woods and trails close to the Buffalo River, like our property, gorgeous countryside. It's only a few minutes from the Natchez Trace Parkway and an easy drive to Nashville. These are big properties, five acres and up, and the prices are great. There's even financing. We are really happy with our property. These guys do a great job. It's hard to find acreage where you can have an RV full time, especially in popular destination spots. This is your property, your way. There's electric and high speed fiber optic internet. No more crowded parks or reservations. You can stay as long as you want. Go to rvlands.net. That's rvlands.net. 
Well, joining us now is Cree Ham. Cree is the sales manager for the Reserve at High Forest. Cree, good to have you on the program. How are you? Great. How are you doing, Mike? We are doing awesome. Uh, hey, I know you guys have a sale coming up, and people keep asking. They've looked at all the beautiful pictures of the Reserve, but uh, when is the next sale? And tell us how that all works. How oh, do people right. take advantage of it? Yeah, the next sale is March 9th, and uh, it's going to be a fun day. Uh, we provide lunch when you come. Uh, we do book appointments for this sale so that you'll get special treatment, get your own tour. And uh, that's what we're doing right now is booking appointments. And uh, we've got that address, which we, we put up on the screen, and we put it in the description so everybody can uh, click on it and go and uh, and make an appointment or find out more. So uh, if, pictures don't do justice to a description of something like this. Describe the reserve at High Forest a little bit, where it's located and what the what the countryside is like. Oh, I'd love to. This is gorgeous property. It's a lot like your property, actually. You're and 15 minutes away from where we are, so I that's know, all it is. Yeah. Which is great. I do love this location of the of the property. It's in Hohenwald, Tennessee, uh, and that's German for High Forest, and we're the reserve at High Forest. So uh, it's a beautiful little town. It's got a little coffee shop. It's got a Walmart. It's got some chains. Uh, restaurants. It has a cute, cute downtown. So we're only 10 minutes from there. So it's beautiful. And of course, if you haven't been to Tennessee, or if you have, it's in the beautiful rolling hills of Tennessee. It's kind of nestled in there. Um, it's got some beautiful wildlife on it. And this is like getting back. Some of them have some gorgeous views of the countryside. Uh, trails that you can walk and ride and it's it's just a it's a gorgeous piece of property people always ask when we talk about uh, rv property is uh first how long are there any restrictions can they stay on this property with their rvs do they have to build can they build what's the answer to those questions well we've got it for everybody we have it for those rvers there's no restrictions for RVs, you can stay there as long as you want. You can you can live in your RV if you like because you have everything right there. You also can build that bit that beautiful retirement home if you want to. Um, and uh, so there's no restrictions. A lot of people will stay in their RVs until they finish building. Uh, people have all different reasons. Some some people like yourself. It's great because you can work out of your RV. You've got electric, you've got high speed internet there. You've got roads, you've got that great town close by. So it's, it's pretty much for everybody. You can use it for recreational. You can build, you can do primary, you can do second homes. Now you, you talk about um, electric and well, water and all of that. Uh, how do folks arrange for that? Because, uh, you know, they may not know. Do you give them a list? Are there contractors available? How do you get get all that installed? Well, that's the beauty of coming to one of these sales. Um, we do have everybody there that can give you all the information. Uh, we do have some local contractors, but we also, especially for those RVers, we will have um, our person that you can use if you want to, you don't have to, but he'll be at the sale and he can help you get started with all that. We make it a really easy process for you and to get all the information, you know, besides I, I, imagine, doing it. I imagine it works just like it did on, on the property that we bought, which you guys also developed just 15, 15 minutes away. Right. Um, I basically hired the contractor. He came in, he put the, he put, uh, took out some trees, uh, did everything I needed uh, helped me design how I wanted to put my RV in the right spot. And uh, it was really a pretty simple process, even even guided me into getting what permits I did need for it. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm sure it's there. I would imagine the water there is, is mostly well water. Is that right? You have to it drill a well, well for water. water? Which yeah. is pretty typical for these size properties in this oh, yeah. location. That's, that's a typical, and it is septic out there. Yeah. Uh, but and the beauty is we're bringing in that power and high-speed internet. 
Yeah, and that's right, right there. Then, and the high speed internet is enough for, for remote workers. I mean, you can, you have a, just a phenomenal connection. We always, there's, there's been times I go to our property just to have a good internet connection so I can do a couple of days work right there. And, that's and it's all, awesome. uh, it, it's, it's great. So the next sale then is, uh, March 9th and uh, they'll get information uh, just look in the description below and uh, you can you'll get a link to it and uh, it's it's really it's really a beautiful piece of land and uh, hopefully we'll put some photos for those who watch it on YouTube and they can see it as well yes. uh, but uh, just the last question Cree uh, who's who is buying these things are they from all over the country like they were in in the units that we bought the property that we bought yeah, yeah, they come from all over. We have a lot of Tennesseans that buy there, but I would say a lot of people from different states in the country. They just want a more uh, a quieter atmosphere, get out of the big hustle bustle of these cities. Tennessee is a wonderful place to live. Cost of living is is fantastic here. There's so so many reasons. It's the beauty of Tennessee. The people here are phenomenal, and they're really nice people. I mean, you know, genuinely. And like and in your community, you've got a lot of friends. I know you've made a lot yes. of friends there. We've actually, uh, we're amazed at how many friends we've made there. And it's, uh -huh. uh, in fact, find more friends there than in our normal full-time home. So uh, just thank you. And I, I should also point out, you are close to Nashville. There, You're even a little closer than we are. It's only about 90 minutes away, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's what makes this location so good. You're very close to Nashville to go have yourself a great time, kick up your boots a little bit. And you're close to Columbia, too, which is a thriving um, city, suburb of Nashville now. Nashville is, is a really growing area. Well, Cree, thanks for jumping on with this, and I hope you have a great sale. I don't know. We'll be down there about that time, and if we are, we always like to look, uh, run into you guys. We run up and say hi as well. So I love it. Uh, I love it. I can't wait to see. I'm sorry I missed you last time. Oh, yeah, my goodness. We were there for the Tennessee Songwriters Night a couple oh, of yes. weeks ago, and it was phenomenal. We went to the Commodore Hotel, which is right near both both properties. And yes. oh my gosh, they had nineteen singer songwriters there that night. We were there. It was it was like being at at the Grand Ole Opry, but in a very intimate setting. It was awesome. We had great entertainment. Uh, that's fantastic. I I hated that I had to run out of there that that night because I really wanted to see that. Yeah. Uh, well, we. We have sure enjoyed our property, and I know everybody at the reserve, our neighbors, are going to do the, say the same thing when, when they get uh, they get there as well. Creeham, good luck on your sale, and we'll uh, check you down the lane. Thank you, Mike. It's great Bye. to talk with you. Welcome back. The interview of the week coming up in just a couple of minutes now. But first, the social media buzz. Yes, with Wendy Boyer. Wendy reports on the hot issues most talked about this past week on the social media on our RV Lifestyle Community Group. And we always have something we can learn from what Wendy shares. Hi, everybody. Over in our RV Lifestyle Community, under the troubleshooting space, we ask folks to share a unique hack they've used to keep their rig functioning. And this turned out to be a great place to go for some ideas. Um, some things that were shared included two from Frederick. Frederick said there's two tools he used that made his RV so much easier to manage. The first was the Level Mate Pro. He used that to when driving into the campsite to make sure he found the most level place. And then it also, of course, made sure his rig was level. And he also recommended getting the Mopika tank sensor for his propane tank. Said it was a great help. And Inca, she suggested creating and following checklists. She said she especially follows their checklist for maintenance and it's worked out really well. And then Paul, he said he installed a four by four PVC fence post in the rear bumper to hold his stinky slinky. So lots of great ideas there um, in the troubleshooting space. Also in our community, I'd love to tell you about a post that we had from, under traveling with pets from Betsy. Betsy asked if anyone had ever had to get their dog a flu vaccine when they were on the road and needed to board him for maybe a day or so. And this led to quite the conversation. Lynette said she lives on the West Coast and she had never heard of the dog flu until she was on the East Coast in the Boston area in 2019 and it was required. 
uh, Randall, he said he also had never heard of a canine flu shot, and I believe he lives in North Carolina, uh, but he said he does remember a canine respiratory disease going around, so it makes sense. <clears throat> and then Patricia, she said that the canine flu has been slowly spreading across the country, and many of the good uh, boarding facilities you might run into are going to require it. So good information there um, if you're traveling with a dog. And then meanwhile, over in our RV Lifestyle Facebook group, we had a great post from Eric. Now, he was looking for advice. He's planning to go to the Badlands, and he was looking for some information on this epic boondocking spot that is on many people's bucket lists. Um, he said they were planning to do a night in July along this road, and this road is called either the Wall Dispersed Area or Nomad View Dispersed. It's near the Badlands National Park in South Dakota. And he was looking for those who had experience staying there. He wondered, you know, in July during peak season, will he have trouble finding a space? Well, he got more than 150 responses, it, lots of good information being shared here. Bill said there are so many great spots, it's probably impossible for them to fill up. Uh, several people said be aware that it can be windy here and, you know, you might not be completely level. Um, but many said this place is just gorgeous. You're going to love it so much. You need to spend more than one night. So lots of good advice there. And that is it for me this week. I'm Wendy Boyer, and I'll see you next time over in the RV Lifestyle community or Facebook group. The one thing that can ruin a perfect RV trip is a bad mattress. And believe us, we know. Over the years, we've tried many, and we have found them all wanting until now. Now, we sleep on the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Quite simply, it's the best we've ever slept on. We chose a queen-size Aurora Lux medium firm mattress that arrived tightly rolled in a box. All we did was put it on the bed, unroll it, and wait for it to recover from the compression. Then we put on the sheets and the bed covers and found we slept so well that we ordered another one for our home. That's how comfortable it is. Our sleep is now so luxurious and deep that we can't imagine using a different mattress. Shipping is free. If you're disappointed with the current mattress in your RV, you owe it to yourselves to try the RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Brooklyn Bedding sends out all of their RV mattresses from their own factory in Arizona. This means they're able to use premium materials at a reasonable price for you with no middleman bringing up the cost. Don't miss out on the best sleep of your life. Visit rvmattress.com slash RV lifestyle and hurry because once November's over, so are these incredible deals. And now talk about interesting things, our interview of the week. Every day it seems we hear from our viewers who are planning long trips or considering going full time and they ask, how can I make sure I can get my medications when traveling? Recently, we learned about a medical company that not only prescribes a year's worth of essential medications for things like heart, thyroid, or other chronic diseases, but five of the most common prescribed antibiotics. So you can always have a supply of those with you. And today, we talk to the owner and founder of Jace Medical, Dr. Sean Rowland. To learn more, welcome, Sean. Well, Dr. Sean joins us right now. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. Hey, tell us how this works. Walk us through uh, this whole idea that you came up with and, and how, how this thing works. Sure. Man, that's a big question uh, as far as looking at what, why this is even, uh, uh, there's a need for this. Um, I think everyone hears about it and then instantly kind of applies their own personal situation to it. And so everyone kind of has their come at, come at comes at it from a different angle. Uh, but basically what Jace medical, what we are is uh, a service that exists to empower people on an individual level to be better prepared medically um, prepared. Medical preparedness is, is also very individual and people have different needs depending on their, on their health. And so at Jace, we're trying to, we're starting off with just hitting the, the the most basic, most important that really apply across the board. And, and so what that is, is, you know, unfortunately here in, in today's day and age in the United States, 
Uh, we're experiencing shortages. We experience them across all different aspects of our lives, but we're also experiencing them in the, in the medical world, whether that comes, uh, comes to us through access to medications or even just access to our doctor. Uh, and so we've created this process. It is a telemedicine process, but telemedicine, um, you know, I, you say that word and also everyone thinks about something different in their experience. What is telemedicine? For us, the process is this. You come to our website, you uh, fill out a couple of forms that are pretty, pretty basic, to be honest. Um, for this service as a physician, I don't need to know everything about your family history, about your, all your surgical histories. And I just need to know a, a, a few basic things. I want to make sure that, that these medications are going to be safe and appropriate for you. So the, the question here is really guided towards that end and, and it's pretty direct and, and basic. Uh, but you fill out that form. It might take you five minutes, maybe 10 at the most. That form goes to a physician uh, who reviews it. And if they have questions, they'll reach out and ask you maybe via email or text. Um, if not, sometimes they are able to just get what they need from the form itself and they will then issue these prescriptions and what they're issuing are prescriptions for things like antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, things that when you need them, you need them right away. Um, you're, you're, you're traveling around, you don't know where the closest, uh, urgent care is and you don't know, uh, where to then go get your medications from a pharmacy. Maybe it's after hours, maybe you're in a rural area. So having these medications on hand at the time you need them is what's key here. So they write those prescriptions. They send it to a, one of our pharmacies, which we've got a, a network of pharmacies that we've worked really hard to get the best pricing from. And uh, they then, the pharmacy will ship that order right out to your door. So really it's meant that you can do it from the comfort of anywhere. As long as you've got an internet with a cell phone or, or a computer, you can do this process in five or 10 minutes and then have these medications delivered to your door. Comes with a book that tells you how to use them. Um, and then comes with access to our network where you can also write in and ask questions anytime you need. Um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, there's more about the why as far as talking, you know, what, why, why do we, are we experiencing these shortages? Why is this something I should pay attention to? But, but that's, that's it in a nutshell, what our service provides. Well, let me, let me ask you about uh, two particular areas. One, I, I have the, the Jace case here, and that has uh, the antibiotics. Uh, talk about that. Um, I assume that in that process of, uh, of filling out the form, if you have an allergy to one of these, it comes up. But uh, how good are these, uh, these antibiotics for, and, and it, how do we know which one to use? Great, yeah. So... You know, antibiotics are, uh, there's a reason why they're a prescription medication. Um, you know, they need to be used correctly for the right illnesses. And you mentioned allergies. So that is an important part of this process, which is why it requires the doctor's involvement. Um, you know, they're powerful medications. People do have, uh, some people have allergies to, to them. So what we've done with this kit, uh, the thinking was this, if I if me as a, as a physician, this is how I we kind of started this whole process. If I, if, if there was a scenario where, whether it was a natural disaster, something catastrophic, I'm cut off from, I don't have access to a pharmacy anymore. What medications would I want? What kinds of things would, are, are the more common things I'm going to have as far as an illness, things like urinary tract infections, skin infections, bite wounds, um, traveler's diarrhea, what are the more common things I might encounter in that scenario? And, and so I want to have coverage for that. But then also in that kind of really tricky, in a, in a scenario like that where you're truly cut off, it's catastrophic. Um, we also want to cover some of the most deadly things because we're going to see uh, diseases that we might not have been used to seeing before. Um, things like bioterror, for example. So these are deadly diseases, 100% fatal. Um, and we wanted to create a kit that would cover from the most common to also the most deadly. And so there's five antibiotics in that base kit that you held up. Those five antibiotics cover all of those things. We're talking, high, the list really is really, really pretty extensive. Uh, dozens of different infections can be covered by, by those medications. How do you know which ones to use? Uh, it does come with, here, we kind of have a sequence of events. If you're able to get a hold of a healthcare professional over the phone or however you, you, need to, you can get a hold of them, maybe you're right in front of them. And they say, man, looks like you've got a, a bad case of cellulitis. You've got a skin infection. Um, here's the antibiotic you should take. Here's how often. Well, you've already, you say, great, I've already got it in my kit. And I, now I know how to take it. If you, if you don't have that person in front of you, 
Uh, maybe you can get them uh, in some other way, phone, email. Maybe you've got a trusted friend who's a healthcare professional that can guide you. If you don't have that, what you're left is with is this book that we've written. The book contains, uh, and you've got it right there. Great. It's it basically has all the medications that are included and, and in written in layman's terms, okay, you've got these symptoms. This is, this is what you you, maybe you flip to the section on, on bites. I just got bit by, by a dog or a cat. What do I do? And so it's going to tell you, tell you, go to this medication, take it this often, look for these signs of infection. Um, and then maybe there's times where it's not appropriate to take the antibiotic and, and then you'd be encouraged to, 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 to not, uh, take the antibiotic because the antibiotic could actually be, be harmful and, and, and uh, we want to do this appropriately. So, so those are kind of the, that's how you know what to take and when to take it. Um, you mentioned allergies, just, just a br brief mention on uh, that, that process through the telemedicine process. And that happens all the time. People will mention, Hey doc, I'm allergic to penicillin. Well, one of the medications in that kit that you're holding up is a penicillin derivative. It's called amoxicillin. Um, and so if you're allergic to that medication, the doctor will determine number one, is it a real allergy? And number two, if it is, let's swap it out. So we'll swap it out for something like the box you're holding out, which is azithromycin. Um, that azithromycin uh, covers a lot of the same things. It's a Z-pack. A lot of people have heard of that. It covers a lot of the same things as a, as amoxicillin. And so they'll give you an extra Z-pack or, or maybe make a different substitution. But at the end of the day, it's custom tailored to be safe for you um, along with those instructions. Uh, uh so... And from that kit, you can add on, we've got, I think we're up to 34 additional medications that you can add to that basic kit of five antibiotics. Now, this, uh, this has lots of implications, of course, to our viewers who often are gone for a long period of time and indeed are in remote areas. Um, boondocking, as my sweatshirt that I'm wearing shows, is very popular. And sometimes you're far removed from places where you can quickly get to an urgent care center. These these just seem like a no-brainer to have in your kit, and, and obviously we will have it in ours. But you have some other things that I think are really important. One of the most common questions we get from our audience is, I'm on the road full-time, uh, or I'm gone for the next seven months. Uh, what's the easiest way to have enough of my medications on hand? Uh, you also have a procedure where you can get them for long-term. Explain that for us. Yeah, so we've been talking about the Jace case service or a product. Um, that is those emergency type medications. The other half of the company is our Jace daily service. The Jace daily is, is just what it sounds like. These are medications that you may take on a daily basis or on a regular basis. And so what we do is we offer, as long as you meet certain criteria where, where our physicians can feel comfortable providing a long-term supply. And what that is, is basically a year supply of your blood pressure medication, of your thyroid medication, whatever that condition is, they'll provide a, a full year supply. And so there's a couple of, you know, uh, stipulations to that. They want to make sure that this is, it's not a new uh, condition. This is something you've had for some, some time. It's something that you've had a dose that's been stable at. Um, and they know you've got regular follow-up with your doctor. And so in that case, then yeah, you go on the service, you, you list the meds that you're taking and the ones you're interested in getting a supply of. It's the same process, goes to that doctor, reviews it, goes to the pharmacy, and you get that 365-day supply. Um, now, and this is probably a question, uh, we'll just deal with it now, uh, as far as the cost and, and how you can pay for this. Because we're doing this extended supply, whether that's the 365-day supply of Jace Daily or a supply of medications like our Jace case, where you're not actually, uh, you don't actually have the urinary tract infection, you're not seeing the doctor right there with, with symptoms, so these are things that insurance, are, they're, they're not going to cover. So this is a cash system. And that's why I went back to how hard we've negotiated with the pharmacies to get, to get this pricing um, where, where this still is an affordable thing. And it turns out you can get a year supply of a lot of these medications for a, a pretty reasonable rate. Um, now, there are certain brand name medications that might be on that list that are going to be pretty expensive. But for the most part, they're all generic medications that... that, that uh, uh, the majority of us consume on a daily basis and they're, they're very accessible price wise. Um, and so there what you go. You medications, get uh, what medications can't you get a year's supply of? Yeah. So right off of the bat, we don't deal with any controlled substances and there's just hard and fast rules when it comes to the DEA, when it, people who are taking narcotic medications, 
medications like um, hormone replacement and uh, your ADHD kind of medications. Those, those uh, we were unable to, to offer in the service. But other than that, it's pretty much, and we're building this list really every day. We'll, we're up to, I think, six or 700 different medications in different formulations. And we'll get an email from a customer saying, hey, what about this one? And so we'll take a look at it. We'll be like, yeah, you're right. Great. Let's add it. And we'll add it to the, we'll add it to the offering. So if we don't have your medication, write us in and let us know what it is. And we'll look at putting it on the list. But for the most what part, what about uh, insulin, for example, say that again, insulin. What about insulin? insulin? Yeah. So stay tuned. We're very close on, on being able to offer the full range of, of, uh, various injectable insulins, um, that's been, it's a lot more complicated. It has to be shipped, um, you know, it's refrigerated and there's temperature control that has to happen. Um, there's a lot of, and the insulin goes from cheap to extremely expensive. Um, and dealing with this, these amounts is something that the pharmacies hadn't had to have, they've not had to do that before. And so we've worked out this problem um, or really any day now um, we'll have a solution for insulin, but that is on the list. So uh, the way to find out about all this is obviously to go to the website, and we will put links everywhere here in this article. And by the way, I think we also have a discount that we can offer people uh, as, a, as an affiliate, as a user of this stuff ourselves. I, I just think it makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't want to get, get you too far off subject, but you did mention the, the shortages and the demand issues um, the whole supply uh, strain thing, L looking ahead, um, granted that we're in a political year, but the world is a pretty chaotic place. We all agree to that. Uh, how, does, uh, how does this fit into all of the uncertainty that we face out here? Does it make sense for people to get a 12-month supply? The, the drugs aren't going to lose their effectiveness? Yeah, you know, okay, so you hit on two things there. One was just the availability and what we might, what we foresee um, happening in the future. And the other, you just touched on the end there, is, is has to do with um, expiration dates. How long are these good for? So let's just get that one out, out, of, the, out of the way really quickly. Um, <clears throat> in the case of the, the antibiotic medications in the Jace case, those are specific medications in that list have, have all been extensively studied by the government, the, the government maintains their own national stockpiles of these medications to, to be used for, whether it's for the military or even for the, pop, the citizens in these catastrophic scenarios. And so they were having to turn these stockpiles over every, every one, two years. It was very expensive. So they commissioned, the Department of Defense commissioned a study through the FDA, and it's ongoing. It's called the Shelf Life Extension Program. And what they do is they take a batch of these medications um, and they test them to make sure that they're still um, viable, that they still are effective and that they haven't degraded into dangerous substances. Turns out that you get uh, really across the board with these antibiotics, a minimum of five years um, before you really see any degradation in, in quality and effectiveness. But actually it extends beyond that to, to as, as much as 15 plus years. Um, as long as they're stored properly. And that just means that they're kept in a cool, dry environment. Now, traveling around, it can be hard to always do that. Maybe you've got them in your, in your truck, your RV, and, and, and uh, you, you've parked somewhere and it gets really warm. Heat can, can diminish the, the life here. Um, you're not going to get that five plus years. Um, humidity can do the same thing. So cool and dry is the key. Um, if not, then you probably left to, to the, the expiration date um, that it normally comes with, which is typically about a year from the time you uh, receive the medications. Um, now, for the other ones, you know you got a year supply. of Those are medications that hopefully you're, you're taking daily, and then you still get your refills. Maybe they still come to your home. You're getting those three-month refills. You've arranged to continue to get regular refills. So you always maintain a fresh supply if you're able to use that stock uh, in a rotating way. Um, now to, to touch on that first part of your question, what's going on? Is this, is this something I really need to be worried about? Um, you know, I am not, I'm a physician. I'm, I, believe it or not, I'm not a salesman. It's not something that comes naturally to me. Um, but here I am at the forefront, um, representing this company, telling people, Hey, you need to, you need to look at what we've, this product. I honestly believe that it's, this is not a question of 
if this is going to happen, it's when. And the reason I say that is because I've already seen it so many times. I've seen it in my own private practice working at hospitals where we didn't have access to really important medications. I hear about it every day from patients who go to the pharmacy to pick up a medication and they're told either it's not coming or to wait a day or two or three. When you're taking an antibiotic uh, because you're sick with an infection, you can't wait a, 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 a day, let alone two or three. Um, so I've seen it. And then I look back and I see that this, the FDA maintains a list of their own medica of, of medications that they monitor. It's the FDA shortage list. It used to have maybe a couple, maybe 10 or 20 medications on there. It's now up to 200 plus. Sometimes it tips over into the 300 plus medications that are on shortage at any given day. We have no production capacity for generic medications in the United States. Zero. And that and it accounts for 95% of what we consume every day is a generic medication. All of it comes from China, comes from India, comes from other countries. And even the other countries, for the most part, are getting in some aspect or another, they're getting a key ingredient or or what we call the active pharmaceutical ingredient comes from China. So the whole system is just ripe for disruption anywhere along the, the chain from A to Z. Um, you know, whether it's the factory in China, the ingredients they're getting from that the FDA doesn't even know where they come from. So they can't source these things to find alternatives. I mean, the whole, and that, you, you said you don't want to, and you'll get me going, I'll, I'll go off on a tangent. So I'll just leave it at that, which is that there's a historical precedent. I've experienced it. It's not going to get better because we don't, we haven't done anything to, to back this up. We're not, we're not opening plants here in the United States. We're not opening them anywhere. Um, there's not a lot of money to be made in generic medications. No one's really incentivized to do it. Uh, from a monetary perspective. And so the problem is just getting worse and worse. And it's not just us. It's the entire world. We get emails from all over the world from people in the same situation. So if and when something does happen, we're in line with the entire world and we're all holding our hands out to, to places like China and India, hoping that they're going to fill the orders. Um, and so I, for me, you know, I, that's just not a position I want to be in. I don't want to be waiting for someone, whether it's the government, whether it's a foreign country, uh, I want to have, I want to be empowered. I want to have those things, the, those medications for myself, for my family, uh, so that I'm not dependent. Tell everybody how to learn more about Jace. Where, where should they go? It's the website, J-A-S-E, jacemedical.com. There's, we, there's a lot on there as far as uh, questions and answers. If you've got more questions we didn't, we didn't cover um, they're probably, you'll find them on the site. And if not, send us an email and we've got plenty of, we've got, uh, some amazing customer service, uh, professionals who would love to answer any of your questions. Uh, there's a phone number there. You can call, there's a chat you can, you can engage with on the website or just send us an email. All right. Last question. Where'd the name Jace come from? It's a two-parter. The Jace, it's an acronym, uh, it stands, it stands for just antibiotics saved for emergencies. Uh, but it also, and more more than the acronym, uh, was our family dog. Uh, he's a our beloved golden retriever. His name was Jace, and the reason he was called named Jace is because in uh, Old English, uh, Jace means healer. And so that's kind of a full circle connection there. Oh, that is great. I figured it was a child, but I didn't think the dog and I didn't yeah. think of an acronym. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dr. Sean Rowland, thanks for being such a great guest and for um, a rather sober look at why this is critical information and particularly uh, for our viewers. We thank you so much for being on the program. And again, we will uh, link uh, in the description below and for uh, on our uh, webpage and everything else. We can get folks even a little bit of a discount as well. Thanks for being our guest and for um, educating us on the need to be prepared this way. Anytime. Thanks for the thanks for the privilege of being here. I really appreciate it. Well, if you want to check it out again, uh, the address for information is rvlifestyle.com slash Jace Case. And you can use the uh, code RVLifestyle10 for $10 off. When we come back, the RV News of the Week. This is the time of year when a lot of people start shopping for their next RV, checking out all of the 2024s online, going to shows. Keystone RV made it easy this year by putting together a guide of their favorite new models and features from all of their fifth wheel brands, Montana, Cougar, Alpine, Arcadia, and Sprinter. Each brand has different floor plans and styling, features, price points, all backed by Keystone's history of innovation, quality, and owner support. The guide is free, and you can get it at keystonerv.com. 
One of the models that was just added to the buying guide is the Montana 3623EB. Besides unparalleled fifth wheel luxury and comfort, this model has an all new e-bike stow and go storage design. The biggest challenge for RV owners is keeping those bikes safe and charged. Montana designed the strut assisted bike rack system that lets you easily load and store your bikes inside of your coach even has a power supply to keep them charged. Learn more and get your free guide at KeystoneRV.com. Right now I want to talk about uh, being connected on the road and there's no better place to go than Mobile Must Have. Mobile Must Have is the sponsor of this part of the podcast and it is a service that is started by RVers for RVers and is dedicated to providing the most needed mobile lifestyle solutions. And this month, Mobile Must Have is offering 30 days of free data with the purchase of a new PepLink router. Now, Mobile Must Have has PepLink routers and internet solutions for every type of RVers, from weekend and holiday vacationers to full-time road warriors and remote workers. And PepLink is the gold standard for mobile internet, and Mobile Must Have has a modem and a data plan that will fit literally every RV budget out there. They offer their Fusion SIM which can provide coverage to every major U.S. carrier. Mobile Must Have also has RV cellular antennas and wiring and cable solutions for Starlink satellite internet. Just go to rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. That's rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have and schedule a free call and free consultation to see the many different internet packages that are available and the one that is just right for you. That's rvlifestyle.com slash mobile must have. Time now for the RV news of the week. Visits to national park sites are up 4% in 2023. Visits to more than 400 sites the National Park Service overseas were up by 4% in 2023 from 2022, which works out to about 13 million more visits. A total of 325.5 million Recreation visits were recorded in 2023, with a record set in 2016 at 330,000.97 million. So, bottom line is they're making a big deal out of it, but it's down considerably from its record, which was set in 2016, a long time ago. So, what were the top spots? The top five include the Blue Ridge Parkway, Golden Gate National Recreation Area, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, Gateway National Recreation Area, and Gulf Island National Seashore. We're right next to that right now. Yeah. In fact, the, we'll be there in just a couple days. Yeah. The National Park Service also broke down the top most visited national parks. And that list in order includes the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. That is always number one year after year because traditionally it has always had free admission. Yeah. yeah. Grand Canyon National Park, Zion National Park, Yellowstone National Park, and Rocky Mountain National Park. And if crowds aren't your thing, check out a story that we've got about the nine best national parks for RVing if you kind of want to be alone and not the most popular yeah. well-attended spots. And we'll put a link in the show notes to that. Uh, in the show notes for this episode, you can find it at rvlifestyle.com slash podcasts. Well, here's a story that's going to get a lot of controversy. Illinois, and this is part of what looks like a trend to us, Illinois may return a state park to the Potawatomi Nation who say that the land was illegally taken from them nearly 200 years ago. An Illinois state park uh, that they're talking about is the Prairie Bend Potawatomi Nation. And they say that the land was taken from them illegally by the federal government back in the 1830s. A bill was introduced in the Illinois House to right historic wrongs over the Shabona Lake State Recreation Area. That's about 1,500 acres in size. It's named after Chief Shabona, and the state park includes about 150 campsites, over eight miles of hiking trails and fishing and boating. But the park is on land that belonged to the chief. And it all happened this way. He briefly left the area to go visit his family in Kansas in the 1830s. 
And when he visited him and he came back, his land had been illegally auctioned off and sold to settlers. We thought this bill was interesting because it's following a recent similar move in Minnesota to give one of its state parks to a local Indian nation. We told you about that recently, and, uh, and uh, I think that this is probably going to be the first or uh, second of a whole bunch more. Our next story is about two children who were walking near their California campground who died in a tragic accident. The two children who were camping in the California campground on land managed by the Bureau of Land Management died last week after falling into rushing water near the Shasta Dam. The children who were hiking when a landslide happened, the landslide dragged them into the water below where they died from injuries. One of the children was a California Police Corporal's eight-year-old son, and the other child has not yet been identified. Police believe they were walking off trail. Landslides are unusual in this part of California, but the area had recently received heavy rain. Well, New Mexico is considering raising park and camping fees and charging non-state residents more. New Mexico is considering raising uh, the fees at all 35 of its state parks. They haven't risen since 1998, and voting fees are the same as they were in 1984. Park officials say they got to raise them to better cover today's costs. And under the proposal, camping fees would rise from 10 to 20 bucks a night for a resident, $30 for a non-resident. Uh, electric service will go from four to ten dollars a night. Water service from zero, it's free now, to ten bucks a night, and sewers from four to ten bucks a night. Now, if you want to use a dump station, you'd only pay ten bucks. Park entrance fees would be waived for state and residents, but they'll go from five dollars to ten bucks for everybody else. And also, the New Mexico State uh, Park announced that uh, camping passes, annual camping passes, which this used to be one of the best deals in the country, the New Mexico State Park annual camping pass is going to be eliminated. Now, New Mexico is a beautiful state. It's one we've camped in and uh, we love it. We uh, did a story about this annual camping pass some time ago and what a great deal it was. Um, but now that's going out the window. I can't believe what a hefty increase that was for a resident. It was it goes from like about eighteen dollars to fifty dollars. So when you add yeah, all annual those pass fees for that, the resident, yeah, for camping for a night, yeah, that's I mean, for the it resident. Really goes but, up, but, but for most $10 of us, dollars more. But for most of us who are not residents, it was so nice to be able to buy this this camping pass that lets you camp all year round. And they aren't going to do that anymore. So. Um, all right. I hope it okay. helps. I hope it helps, New Mexico. You got beautiful parks, but you know everything keeps going up. All Isn't right. That's the truth. We got RV questions coming up right after this. You know, there's only a handful of places where you can enjoy temperatures in the 70s during the harshest months of winter, and one of those is Arizona. Um, but most places that you try and get into in an RV, you'll find they're very expensive. They're crowded. Well, there are new RV ownership properties outside of Phoenix. The development is known as Saguaro Acres, and the prices start at $39,900. Uh, great owner financing available. Uh, these are two to five acre sites. And the best part is they all have access to beautiful uh, Alamo Lake and the Arizona Peace Trail, which is this great ATV trail that people from all over the world come to. This is ownership, you own this land, so you don't need any reservations to go stay. There's no time limits how long you can stay, no crowded parks, you share it, rent it, whatever you want, because it's your land. So this new development in Arizona is worth you guys checking out if you're out west and you're thinking about some, some cool property. Just go to bigazland.com, all one word, bigazland.com. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborne batteries. Battleborne batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborne batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig too. 
Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back, everybody. Time now for the RV questions of the week. And before we get to the first one, we would like to get yours. All you have to do is write us. Our personal email is Mike and Jen at rvlifestyle.com. All right. You better listen up, everybody, because this sounds like something that I might do and you might do it too as well. The question is, I was pouring dishwater down toilet and dropped a fork down the toilet, unable to see it and need to know how to get it out before it causes a problem, Janice. Janice, whenever I do something like that, people always say, you shouldn't feel too bad because lots of others have made the same mistake. Well, you still feel pretty bad. Uh, but that's what I'm going to say to you, Janice, because truly a lot of other people, fortunately, that hasn't happened to us yet. Uh, a lot of people have happened, and it's happened the exact same way that they were emptying their gray water in the black tank, and they had a bunch of soapy stuff on it, and they didn't see that there was a knife or a fork or spoon, in your case, a fork. Okay, so I this is no guarantee that it will work, but this is what I've heard works. First of all, uh, make sure your black tank is filled to at least 75 80%, and then um, go and empty it. Uh, if if you you know put your hose in in the flush valve, and uh, then after you've emptied it, and you know, take a hose from outside, bring it inside, put it in the flush valve of the toilet, and then use that hose to fill the toilet up again, and flush it again. Now the fork is either going to flow out with the pressure of the sewer, uh, or it's going to lodge perpendicular to that that valve that you pull out in the sewer, and. Um, if you have a clear receptacle at the end of your sewer hose, which is available at any camping store, it's always good to have that because you can kind of see what's flowing through that uh, that that stinky slinky that connects to the sewage. Um, it, you can see if it if it gets swept along into the sewer. Um, but if not, uh, make sure that that black tank valve, that gate valve, opens and closes. Uh, if it doesn't close, then the chances are pretty good that the fork is lodged there in that valve. And then you can use some tongs or a wire coat hanger and you should be able to dislodge it from the hose. Uh, if none of those work well, try it again. The key here is to get a lot of water flowing out of that hose. Um, but if after a couple of black tank emptyings, you still aren't sure the fork is out, don't worry about it. It's not going to do any serious damage. The only issue may be if somehow it does lodge in the back black tank gate, and uh, you can fix that with, again, some tongs or coat hangers we talked about above. All right. Good luck. Uh, now, um, wear gloves when you do this. <laughs> you don't have to say that. <laughs> Make sure you clean up your any spillage or anything. And the only thing that would apply different here, Janet, is uh, this is assuming you have that standard slinky, stinky, slinky hose. If you have a macerator toilet, don't do anything. You're going to have to take it to an RV dealer because the macerator, as stuff comes out of the black tank, it grinds it, you know, and you don't want that to be grinding on a, on a, on a fork that you drop down there. So, None of this applies if you have a macerator toilet, but if it's a standard, you know, black tank uh, gate that you pull up in the gray tank um, and the stinky slinky, then you're going to probably be able to get that out, or if not, it's not going to hurt too much under there. But a macerator toilet is a whole different ball game, and that could do some serious damage. All right, do you have a question for us? Just send it to us, Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. What are you thinking? You're I'm right. just thinking. I hope I don't do that. <laughs> yes, you tend to, but you have to be in the no, gray but, tank. Yeah. Well, you, have, you know, well, it yeah. depends on how rushed I am. Normally, I'm pretty careful, but all of us, you know, there's a time when you're moving a little too fast, you know, a little it, faster than the brake. And and that's 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 exactly when mistakes are made. I make them all, you know, backing up, you know, hooking up when I move too fast. Uh, a big danger to me is when I'm setting up. 
and people come and start talking to me and I'm backing into the site and I'm trying to do it all. There's a sequence, you know, we all kind of get in a sweet spot. We do everything in order the same way. And that's, that's good having those kind of systems. But what goof set up to me is when people come and say, Hey, how you doing? Where'd you come from? And I'm trying to set up my camp, you know, same thing happens, uh, when you're, when you're, um, you know, hooking up and getting ready to leave. You want to do it, all, take your time through each step. A lot of people have little checklists that they do. And then Russian stuff, you know, you think you got her all done and you're talking to somebody else and you empty that down there. Oh, it's raining. It's or easy it's, to happen. Yeah. yeah oh, you got God. kids yelling or somebody wants to go someplace. And, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's easy. It's easy. And we all make those mistakes. They're called learning processes, everybody tells me. And hopefully it doesn't cost a thousand or two thousand to correct. I, if she's got the stinky, stinky thing, I think she's okay. And you, you, even if it just stays in that black tank, it's not going to do any serious damage. But eventually, it will probably lodge in the uh, in the gate thing, and you'll have to go in and get that thing out. All right, that's the show for this week. Uh, we got a, um, a Class B van. We got to start testing out this week, and uh, we're going to be doing it in the nice, warm sunshine of Florida. So. Stay with us. We'll kind of bring you through. We'll put some pictures uh, in social media on our uh, community.rvlifestyle.com. We'd love to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.